today getting our bees ready for winter. So we're gonna do an oxalic acid treatment as well as wrap them up. But before we do that, we're just gonna make sure that they were fed properly. Um, so this is something you wanna do as a beekeeper, just to get a sense of what your colonies should feel like. So you wanna lift them up from the back um, once you're finished feeding, and it should feel very heavy. Um, now I think one of the hardest things when you're a new, newer beekeeper is to know what very heavy feels like. It's sort of a vague term. We do have numbers, so singles should be about 90 pounds going into winter. Doubles should be about 120. Now you don't have to go out and weigh them with a scale. Um, just try to get a sense of what that would feel like lifting from the back. So if it feels like your colony is anchored to the ground, then you know you're doing great. If you can lift them up and you almost flip them off the pallet, then they're not quite so well fed. Um, now I do recommend doing this if you're checking to see if they still need more feed. Do this a little earlier than right now. Um, it's getting a little cold. The bees, even if you give them food at this time, it's likely that they're not going to take all that much more down. Um, so if you want to see if you need to feed more, do this a little earlier. But doing it right before you wrap is going to give you a good sense of, okay, what are my hives supposed to feel like? And yes, they're very heavy. I can feel great going forward. So I've, I've just put on an entrance reducer here. Um, they come in many, many different forms. There's metal ones, wooden ones, ones you insert, and ones like this that are just cut out of a piece of wood. And uh, I've just screwed it to the front. Entrance reducers just help keep those pesky mice out um, that wanna come in and stay warm in the winter and destroy some of your equipment. Um, so this way the bees as well are more easily able to defend the front of their hive. Um, and um, make them work a little less hard if there is a prevailing wind here. Even when wrapped, it helps them out a little bit. And I just smoked the hive before I put the entrance reducer on because they are going to make a bunch of vibration when I attach it. So make sure that they're nice and calm when I put it on because it is a bit of a disturbance. So this um, hive here next door, it's really easy to put the entrance reducer on because it's got a, a landing board um, for the entrance, whereas this one doesn't. So I'm just making sure that they um, it's actually on properly and not entirely blocking their entrance or becoming completely useless. So I actually need to lower it down. One side's a little too high. There we go. oxalic acid drizzle treatment today in the yard. Now we mixed up, um, mixed up the oxalic acid solution earlier uh, in the lab and we carried it in this, um, this container so it wouldn't spill anywhere. But as you can tell, it's a little difficult to get the syringe in and out. It's not impossible, so you could use something like that if you like. Um, but when you're doing a large number, it's easier if you put it in a bigger container that's easier to get the syringe in and out of. Um, so we're going to dump this into the bin and then put the oxalic acid on the colonies. Okay, so notice I'm wearing my, my gloves here to make sure I'm not getting any of the solution on my hands. Um, if you have a tough syringe that really squirts out the oxalic acid, you also might consider um, eye goggles, but this one's pretty smooth today, so I don't anticipate any splashback. So I've got 50 milliliters here. Now this is the maximum dose for any hive, no matter the size. So whether single or double, you're only going to give them a maximum of 50 milliliters of this solution. And you're gonna put about five milliliters per seed. And you wanna make sure that you're getting the oxalic acid solution on the bees. So if you have a double, split the double. Don't just drip it from the top because it's not gonna get everywhere it needs to be. You do have to make sure um, that this is covering all of the bees and getting on them. Oxalic acid works by contact, so it has to touch the mites to kill them. So let's go here. Just drizzle a little bit in each seam. When you're first starting out, you might be a little faster or slower with your spray, but you'll get the rhythm. 
see and this is the first one this year so I didn't quite get it. All right and then my inner cover goes back on and you'll notice that the upper entrance here is facing towards the front. Um, this upper entrance here isn't necessary because I actually have this hole here um, but you do need one upper entrance in your hive before you wrap for winter. That's key for ventilation in the, in the winter. So having an upper entrance, like I said, is critical for the winter. It allows the bees to control their ventilation and, and control moisture in their hive. Um, and if it gets too damp in there during the winter, it can be really detrimental to them. Um, so have an upper entrance like this that you don't block off with a wrap. But it is important that the entrance hole is on the same side as the bottom entrance. You don't want to have an entrance um, or an upper entrance on the side or the back of the colony because that creates a cross draft that's too cold for the bees to handle. So having it on the same side as the bottom entrance is key. Okay, so we've got a double here. So we'll show you that we do have to crack it open to make sure that we're getting the oxalic on the bees. If you look at the cluster from the top here, there's lots of bees on this side, but not many on this side. Um, so I wouldn't waste any, any oxalic drizzle down there. So we put our veils on because it's a little warmer uh, than we thought today. The bees are flying around a little bit. So not a good way to end the season by getting stung in the face. So we're gonna prevent that. Um, so I'm gonna do the bottom first. So Colette here is gonna crack this box for me. I'm gonna get in here, see the bees here. I'm gonna put oxalic just in the middle of the seam. And then we're gonna do the rest in the couple seams on top that the bees are present in. And close it up. So you wanna be putting oxalic acid on when it's below 10 degrees is your aim. Um, you want the bees to be clustered. As I said before, it's a contact treatment, so it has to get on uh, the bees and contact the varroa mites to kill them. So you want them to be clustered and mingling and, and transferring this oxalic acid throughout the cluster. Um, so you're going to get them clustering any, anywhere below 10 degrees. Somewhere between 0 degrees and 5 degrees is a good target as well because they're clustered tightly. They're not going to be flying up at you. Um, and below 0, you don't necessarily want to be opening your hives uh, for any length of time. It might start doing some damage once you get too cold. Um, so those are temperature considerations you want to keep in mind for oxalic acid. It's not temperature dependent the same way thymol products and formic acid products are, um, but it's something to keep in mind nonetheless. All right, the last thing you want to keep in mind for oxalic acid um, is that it's not effective during periods of brood production. That's why we're doing it so late in the season. November, there's going to be hardly any, if any, brood left in these colonies, which means all the varroa mites are on the bees, which means they are vulnerable to the contact oxalic acid. A lot of people talk about doing multiple oxalic acid treatments. It can be damaging to the bees once you start applying this over and over again. Um, so doing it once and making sure that your one treatment counts by doing it at a time when all of the varroa mites are vulnerable to the treatment, that's going to do your bees a lot more favors than doing it over and over and over again. And that's the same case whether you're doing oxalic acid drizzle or whether you're doing the vaporization method. All right, so you've probably noticed that we are using the oxalic drizzle method and not the oxalic vaporization method. Um, so it is the exact same, the exact same chemical oxalic acid that are used for both treatments. They're just two different methods. Um, we definitely recommend the oxalic drizzle method over the vaporization method. Um, so I know that the vaporization method is very kind of popular and trendy and talked about right now. There's a lot of people kind of online who are recommending it, um, but. First and foremost, a vaporizer um, will cost you a lot more money um, than just a, a plastic syringe, so the cost factor is something to bear in mind. A lot of people also believe that the vaporizer is a lot quicker and more convenient, um, but in reality, when you are using the vaporizer correctly, you need to allow a lot of time for it to heat up. 
um, for it to actually reach that correct temperature in order for it to vaporize properly. Um, so when you factor in the amount of time that you are waiting for it to heat up, it actually ends up taking a lot more time. Um, and the third and possibly the biggest consideration with the drizzle versus vaporizer um, is that the vaporizer can be really harmful for the beekeeper, for you, if you're breathing that vapor in. Um, so if you are using the vaporizer, please make sure that you are using proper um, personal protective equipment, that you are using a proper respirator style face mask. If you've ever <laughs> breathed it in accidentally, you will know that it is very harsh, it is not very pleasant, and especially if you're using it um, uh, a lot over time, if it's sort of building up chronically in your system, it can create a lot of health problems for you as the beekeeper. So we've got our oxalic on, we've got our entrance reducer on, and now it is time to do the final step, which is to actually physically wrap the hive. Um, so first things first, we are going to put some hive top insulation. Um, so like most things to do with winter, hive top insulation comes in many different forms. You can buy all kinds of different commercial products. So this we just bought from a bee supply store, but you could also make your own. You could use um, burlap, you could use feed bags full of wood shavings or packing peanuts or any kind of thing like that. Um, there's not necessarily one best type of hive top insulation. It's more about what works for you, what's the easiest for you to store, how much money you want to spend, that kind of thing. Um, so we are just going to put our hive top insulation inside our inner cover up top. Um, and the point of hive top insulation is just to stop the heat from escaping up the top. So much the same way that uh, you wear a hat in the winter because you use, lose a whole lot of heat through the top of your head. Um, it is the same with beehives and this just helps to keep some of that heat in instead of leaching out the top so they don't have to work as hard to um, keep the brood chamber nice and warm inside. Um, so next step is I'm going to put my actual wrap on. Um, so again, you can make your own using something like tar paper that won't have a lot of insulation. So that's something to be aware of. Um, so the technical term for, you know, how much insulation something has is called the R value. Um, so in Southern Ontario, you don't necessarily need something that has a huge R value. Like for example, I don't have one to show you, but there's a type of um, wrap that is called the Western wrap and it has a huge uh, R value. It's very, very insulated because it was developed for the Canadian prairies, which get incredibly cold, incredibly windy. Um, so here in Southern Ontario, we're kind of lucky in that we don't necessarily need something that intense, but if that's what you have and that's something that works for you, that's totally okay. Um, so this yard uh, is a little bit more northern, so we do try and um, do something that has kind of a, a mid-level R value. Um, so this one is a type of commercial wrap called a Hogan wrap. Um, so you can see it's just kind of black plastic on the outside to capture some of that heat and hold it. And then inside is that kind of silver bubble wrap looking stuff. You can also get um, hive top insulation. That's that same silver bubble wrap kind of stuff. So that is good. It has a good um, insulation level. So you can kind of see that there is a seam where it joins together here. Um, and a lot of people might try and put that seam kind of in the corner, but in fact it is supposed to go in the front where your front entrance is. So, so Um, these do come in different sizes, so you can get one for a single or a double. A lot of commercial wraps even come in sort of like a size and a half kind of deal. Um, so make sure you're getting one that is appropriate for um, the type of uh, hive that you're running. And then you can see that this seam here, it kind of creates a little bit of a chimney. It creates some space that um, air can continue to get down there, so we're not totally covering up our top entrance and you know if you have the entrance but it's covered by the wrap anyways then you're not getting that ventilation factor so you want to make sure that's not covered um we don't have one but you could also bring kind of like a wooden dowel or a stick and you can kind of shove it in the front entrance there so that there's no way that it can um 
you know, shift around and end up covering it. All right, so my next step is to put my lid on. Uh, you're just gonna put it on top. You might have to kind of shimmy things around um, to make sure it's fitting well over the wrap. So another important part of wintering your hives is making sure that you're not gonna end up with a big puddle in the back of your colony. <laughs> Um, what we want to do is make sure that all of our hives are tilted forward slightly and that's going to allow any moisture that collects to drip down to the bottom board and then roll out the front so it's not collecting there, um, causing moisture issues for your bees or even freezing. As your bees respire, they will create some condensation, um, which is another reason why your inner cover insulation is so important. It's going to prevent any ice forming, it's going to allow that water to drip down to the bottom and then if you tilt it, it's gonna allow um, that water to flow right out the front. So, doesn't have to be fancy. All you have to do is tilt it and add something to the back to make sure that any water is gonna roll right out the front. Now, follow me. If you have colonies that are on screen bottom boards, your tilt is gonna be a little different. So this colony here, it has a solid bottom board as well as a screen bottom board on it. So if we tilt it forward, then water is going to drip through the screen bottom board and pool at the front. And you can see if you come around to the front, that that water has nowhere to run out of. This is closed. So instead of tilting it forward towards the front, we're going to tilt this one back so that water can pool and run out of the opening back here. The last step is to place a heavy rock or brick on the top of each hive, and then you are done wrapping your hives. Congratulations. Just a quick pro tip, when it's cold out, the bees will end up crawling all over you, looking for warmth. They can crawl into your pockets, um, down the back of your shirt, that kind of thing. So always do a quick check for bees before you get back in your vehicle.